And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Friday, February 9th of 2024. We've made it to the end of the week, and we have made it to the end of chapter 8 in Mark's Gospel. Uh, we have been working through Mark's Gospel for a while, and so today we're going to look at verses 31 to 38 and wrap up chapter 8. But remember, yesterday we left off Jesus at Caesarea Philippi. We're still there. He's teaching there. That's where he's at. Uh, and he asked the disciples, you know, who do you think I am? Or who do they say I am? Uh, who do people say that I am? And he, they give him their various answers. And Peter, then when Jesus says, who do you say I am? Correctly identifies Jesus as the Christ. He is the Messiah. Uh, he's that messianic, promised messianic figure. And it's in the house of David, uh, the line of David. And then he told him to be quiet. And that reason for that being quiet is going to spill into to today's uh, discussion. So without further ado, let's jump into verses 31 to 38, chapter 8 of Mark's Gospel. <clears throat> and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Okay, now the last part, he's talking about the second coming again, right? Okay, so that's the second coming. Um, but Peter, when Jesus says, you know, we've got to, uh, I'm going to be killed in all of this, um, be, be, be beaten and rejected and all of these things. And Peter still has the mindset of the people that Jesus was telling them not to tell everybody because they would want to install him as king. Peter and unfortunately, I think probably all of the disciples until the garden uh, incident um, believe that somehow Jesus is going to pull out a, you know, a, a trump card and and there's going to be a pack of angels show up and it's just going to be um, one big glorious battle and Jesus is going to be instilled as the king of the world. Um, and that is the, the, the promise of the messianic promise. And that's what they think is going to happen. Just like we talked about yesterday, that's what people were looking for. Why part, a large part, why Jewish, a lot of the Jewish people didn't jump onto the Jesus uh, bandwagon back then. Uh, and perhaps still don't. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Peter says, what are you talking about, Jesus? Come on, man. And starts to rebuke him. And, of course, Jesus flips the script. As we talked about flipping the script the other day. And comes back on Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. And people read that and they go, oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, Jesus just called Peter Satan. And, well, anytime you find yourself in aversion to God, uh, countering God, standing in the way of God's uh, will, you're playing for the wrong team. Uh, you're not on the side of God, but of men or Satan. Uh, Satan means adversary in, in, in the Greek. Uh, Hasatan, the adversary. Um, so he's you're not working on, on my behalf, so you're working on Satan's behalf, so get behind me and get in line. Um, this is not about installing a kingdom here on earth. It's about getting forgiveness of sins, as we talked about yesterday. Um, so he calls them together and he says, hey, listen, um, we're not bringing in this holy kingdom. You're not going to get these positions of power. They're not going to be the right and the left hand um, of the throne and all of those things. He's, you, you're not going to be vying for that kind of a position. In fact, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to, be, I'm going to ascend. And you're going to be left here to deal with it, to, 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 to bring this earthly kingdom, uh, this, this in-between time, this you know, time of uh, trial and tribulation, if you will, um, the last days that we're dealing with here. We're in the last days. Um, you're going to be here and it's, you're going to suffer. You're going to have to suffer in order to spread the word, in order to, be, to spread the gospel 
you will in fact suffer. And all of the disciples suffer. Uh, all the apostles uh, their stuff suffer. They all are martyred, with save that we believe that John, the disciple John, wasn't martyred. He was the only one to die of old age. The rest of them all met icky ends, if you will. Um, and so that's what's going on here. Um, you have to take up your cross and follow me. And you're going to suffer. You're not going to get that cushy job that you're looking for in this kingdom. And I knew a minister at one time. Um, I still know him. He's actually a regional minister now. Um, I won't say what denomination, but um, I heard him give a sermon one time that really just got me to go, man, he, no, 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 not quite right. Um, and he was talking about that he wanted, he, you know, his goal was to serve the Lord well enough that when the kingdom came, he was going to be in a position of, of the bureaucracy. He believed there's going to be a heavenly bureaucracy um, set up on the new heaven, new earth. Um, and I'm like, I don't think that's how it works. I don't think we're living this life to find out what, where we're going to be in a, you know, a register of deeds or what have you, um, or a sheriff or deputy or something like that, or a senator or what have you um, in God's kingdom. I don't think that's how that's supposed to be working. I don't think that's what we're working towards. Um, we need to keep our eye on the ball, and the ball is, is to spread in the gospel, to teach people about Jesus Christ, to bring them to the love of Christ Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be thinking about what's in it for me. And that's kind of what Jesus is telling us here. And unfortunately, I think that minister was, even though he was thinking about heaven, he was still thinking about what's in it for me. What's in it for Jesus? That's what you need to think about. That's our goal. What's 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 our task for God? If we are putting it, putting it in for ourselves, then we have not, in fact, denied ourselves and picked up the cross. All right? And part of this plays into we're coming up on uh, the season of Lent, Ash Wednesday is next Wednesday. Um, the 14th of, of February is Ash Wednesday. It's early this year, kind of early. Um, and that's the whole thing about giving things up. You know, uh, what do you give up for Lent? Uh, people give up chocolate coffee. I'm like, gosh, who would be so crazy to give up coffee? Um, though I need to get it out for my tremors. And maybe I should just do that this year, so it's self-serving. Nah, that's not be that way. Um, I kid. But... That whole idea about denying ourselves, giving something up, and people talk. There's people I've heard talk about um, going through their possessions and picking out something that they no longer need. Uh, excuse me, every day of Lent and putting it in a bag. I've even heard people say, you know, pulling out a uh, grocery bag and every day filling it with something that they have in the house that they don't need. And those things during the whole series of Lent, um, they donate those things to charity or to, you know, to uh, Goodwill or what have you. Anyway, um, those are all good things. Those are all good exercises of ways of, of, of denying ourselves. Okay, that's what it's all about. That's what this is about. It's not about us. It's about him. Long story short, have a blessed day. Be a blessing to someone today. Um, hopefully you'll come back next week. We're going to be talking about the Transfiguration come Monday. We're going to start chapter 9. Be a blessing to someone today. God bless you. God loves you. If you like these devotions, please like and subscribe. Come back again. Visit us. Feel free to share. Please. Bye-bye.